All right, so you've gone through, you read directions carefully, you annotated those directions. You closely read the text, maybe a couple times over to annotate relative to your purpose. Now you're ready to start planning your essay. And we're going to do this by making an outline. And the reason we're going to do an outline as a style of pre-write is just because if we go look at the test itself, in this case, the tool they give you right here is an outline tool. And I'm going to show you how to use it really quick. Also, in general, like just me, Mr. Cowan, talking to you, I really think that like as you're learning how to write, other forms of pre-writing are cool. As you get older and as you write things that are more complex, I am like a total believer in outlines as a way to organize ideas. Like circles of lines in them and between them and stuff or four squares, like stuff is cool when you're younger. It comes up in rare instances where like that would be a good kind of tool to use to organize an essay. But in general, outlines are really, really effective. And I'm going to show you how to use one. So what you need to do for this in your outline is these four things. You need to include a clear controlling idea or thesis. You're going to break up that idea into several big ideas. For each big idea, you're going to include specific text evidence. For each piece of text evidence, you explain why it relates to your big idea. And then you include a reminder for yourself at the end of the outline just to write a conclusion. We're not going to worry about that yet. So what you should do is go back to your OneDrive, go back to the performance task essay with direct text and directions, Scroll to the very, very bottom. Very, very, very bottom through all your annotations. It says plan and write your essay here. And when you tap the enter key, you may want to bring the font size down. So I would bring it maybe down to like 12. Doesn't really matter, but saves you some space. And then if we look over on the tool they're going to give you on the SBAC, they have this one and two lines next to it, and then these dots with lines. Well, every word processing program has a similar thing. Okay, one, two, three lines, dots of lines. I'm a big fan of one, two, threes because I'm kind of uptight like that. And I like to like number things so I can like check them off as I go. I would encourage you to use numbers. Bullets are good for like informal outlines when you get the concept, but they're not as good in terms of like making sure you don't miss anything when you go back to like finish your essay. So I'm going to say use the numbering thing. When you click numbering, it automatically makes this little number one. And in this number one, this is really where I would write your thesis. And remember, a thesis is one, maybe two sentences that are going to express the main idea of your essay. And everything else in your essay you write is going to relate back to that main idea. Well, your main idea is comparing the two different societies, talking about similarities and differences. And so I would say something the like the Incas and Pueblans were similar because, and then you're going to have to fill this in and like explain in general. That's going to be your job to fill that in. However, they were also different, different because, and then just also you need to come up with some word to kind of explain in general. That's your thesis. You might even want to label it thesis. Okay, now here comes the mechanics of using an outline tool on Word Online. Good news is when you learn how to use it on Word Online, it works the same as Word on your computer. It'll probably work very similarly over here, maybe not exactly the same. When you tap enter, it makes a number two. The idea here being that as you go further to this side of the page, the ideas should get bigger. And if words are typed over here, like they start over here, they get smaller. For example, if I wanted to add like a sub idea to my thesis, I would try to make indent the paragraph so it goes in here. You can do that two ways. One way is I could click this little arrow right here that moves the text over. Look what happens to the number two. Watch. Click. It makes a little A. What that shows is like I'm adding a little detail to elaborate on my ideas here. And then if I want to go back and have it be number two, like, oh, wait, I don't need a detail to elaborate here. I go click this one to go back the other direction. You can also do that through key commands, um, through using tab or shift and tab. But I would, just for the sake of safety, use these buttons just for right now. So I'm going to say similarities. I'm going to start off with uh, similarities is my next big idea. Um, and then I guess you'd probably put like 
So reason why they were similar. And this is going to be the reason you came up with. So you're going to write like the reason you came up with why they were similar, like in general. And then I'm going to tap the enter key. Well, I'm not ready to move on for that. i got to put some stuff in. So I'm going to tab and hit enter. And I'm going to say like one example of how they were similar was, and then you fill this in. So now you need to actually write an example of how they were similar. If I tap enter, you need to put in a quotation. So find a quotation from a source, tap enter. I'm going to indent one more time because I'm going to now explain that quotation in my words. I got to explain what that quotation even means. And I'm going to tap enter again and I'm going to indent back. And I got to have at least another quotation from another source. If I'm showing some similarity, well I got to show one thing. I also got to show how the other thing is similar. So quotation from another source. And then, not sauce, source. And then enter, and I'll indent again, and I'm going to explain that quotation in my words. Enter, and now I might do another quotation. I could. But what I'll probably do is go back and do um, another example of how they were similar. And then same deal. I'm just going to do a quotation from the source. And and I hate to do this to you guys. I, I feel like I screwed up this outline a little bit. These should probably be indented one more level over. All of them. Because I'm really talking about ideas and sub-ideas. I know this gets a little confusing. But I'll show you in a second what I mean by this. I'm going to fix up my outline a little bit because the idea behind an effective outline is that it shows kind of on the page the bigger ideas over here and the further you go this way these are the kind of smaller the ideas are the more specific the ideas are so I have my thesis big idea one of the big ideas in my thesis right here and then one of the big ideas that relates to that idea and then a quotation that relates to that idea explanation of that quotation quotation explanation another example of how they're similar quotation explain it quotation explain it and I might do another one of how they're similar, or I might do a reason you came up with why they were different in general. So some reason in general why they're different. And then, I'm I, because I'm not actually doing this, and I'm sorry this is a horrible thing to do to you, I'm going to just copy and paste to kind of give you this example. So you do one example of why they were different. Was, and then you got to fill that in. And another example of why they were different. And then for each one, use a quotation, and then you explain it. And then I would at least, at least do that. Now I've compared and contrasted. Not every essay is divided up into five paragraphs. Not every essay looks identical. What every essay does, every single essay you ever write, what it does is it figures out what the purpose is for writing it. You figure out, like, why are you writing this thing? Then you generate a thesis, which is a controlling idea. It's a sentence or two that explain, that responds directly to the reason that you're writing this essay. And then you go through your essay, and you kind of break that thesis up into smaller ideas, and then break those smaller ideas up into smaller ideas until you've totally explained them in a logical way that kind of goes in order. And then, at the very end, conclusion. But you don't need to write this yet. So I'll just make you a note. Don't do write this yet. All right. That was a long video. Probably going to have to go back and reference it. This is a long step. You can do this, though. Get to work.